tutorial starts with a song, but it's only a few seconds long. Started with animation. What you've just seen is this scene here. Uh, I'm in the perspective window and I locked the camera right here so I cannot move it. What I'll do now in order to show you a little bit about this scene is I create a camera from that view. It's exactly the same camera in the same position but of course it's not called perspective but it's called perspective one. So I'm currently looking through perspective one. And because it's a copy of the previous one, it's locked as well. So I can unlock it and move around in the scene. These nine ones here, they actually come from a previous tutorial, but it doesn't matter what kind of objects they are. It's about uh, component uh, modification here in NURBS modeling, which, which can lead to results like these here, or uh, this object here, it's all very nice, uh, nicely done in, in the NURBS world. But uh, you can watch this tutorial, of course. But uh, this is just about rendering and light here. And um, when I have tiny objects like these, I like to put or, or at least change the background a little bit because by default it's black or it shows the environment right here. Where does the environment come from? It looks like a uh, a 360 degree spherical photo. In fact, it sort of is. You can go all around. When we land, we land in the same place here. The camera sits somewhere down here, and uh, up there are the lights. So, um, how does this come about? Actually, have a look at the outline. It's my only light in the scene. It's an Arnold AI that is Sky Dome light. And the Sky Dome light in the attribute editor has a mapped color. So the color is the uh, background which you actually see here. The, the source for this color is a file, an image name, and it's called Kaylee Interior 1KTX. It's one of thousands of, most of them free, uh, spherical HDR photographs. HDR means uh, high density and uh, it, uh, it's important if you want to have nice reflections to have a, uh, a, qu a good resolution so to say. This image actually comes in different sizes and I think this is a very small uh, version here 1K only um, for a high class rendering I would probably go for the 100 megabyte uh, version of that file which is available to as far as I remember. We don't actually see the background in the rendering. If I render this frame here, for example, we need to go to the perspective one shape now. It's all black here, although the background is there. And the reason is that I um, deactivated the visibility in the camera view. So when you go down uh, in the Sky Dome light shape, attribute editor here, you find the visibility of the camera. And that's a, uh, a factor which you should often consider. If I turn this up to one, uh, the image looks totally different because the background now appears and I find it only distracting. That's why I often map um, something to the sky dome, a picture or a ramp or a grid texture or anything. Um, and uh, make it invisible for the camera, but it does have uh, its uh, it, uh, influence on the objects. So if we get closer here, for example, the camera is now off for the for the background uh, texture. When we render this, we see that it's working on our material. So it's there. You see the light here reflecting, and uh, this is quite beautiful, really, because um, you don't have to. Um, actually rely on that image in the rendering scene. I introduced a NURBS, could, could have been a polygon, plane as well, pretty rough. I set it in the background. It has a reflective color, I think, at least you see a reflection here. The sky dome uh, light in the background, now let's have a look at it. I animated it. 
it rotates slowly around the y-axis and you actually see this in in the animation you see the while the object stands still you see the reflections moving I think this is a very cool effect, although totally unrealistic. But it makes the structure more clear of the objects while they stand still, more or less. So this is the reason why the reflection changes in the animation. Now, uh, how about this object here? Uh, it has two keyframes, as you can see down here. Uh, I let it start like this just sits there and then it slides slowly to the left and out of the camera so what the camera then sees is the black background because we made this invisible for the camera I actually did that because I was undecided about whether it's good to have white as background or black uh, I don't know both versions are nice I don't know so why do we see that graininess here? Of course, Arnold is cleaning it up while it renders this image, but why is it here? Because we have motion blur. And uh, that makes the object slightly out of focus. Uh, and the moving background, of course, gives a motion blur effect too. Let us go to the part where the, uh, where the motion is more drastic here. Uh, let's have a look here. Actually, let's click here in order to see sort of the textures. Uh, you see that this object here, and for that purpose I go to the um, channel box, which is here. You see only one red dot here. That means I'm only rotating uh, around Y. And um, I did this for all the same. They're all the same. You see the value is always minus 47 at this position and um, a little bit uh, more here and 147 right here for that one, for that one, for there. So they all have the same rotation. You do this by just picking them all without the background and just keying them. When you have picked different objects, several objects, in the channel box you can animate them all together so right mouse click and set a keyframe you cannot do this in the attribute editor because the attribute editor only works for the last selected object it's that one and uh, the animation goes like this slow motion to the left then they more or less stop it's a tiny motion and now I let the background move and then I make a big rotation very fast like this in the other direction and then they kind, kind of um, smooth out or smooth off. So here the uh, animation is quite drastic and here you should see the motion blur quite drastically. You see none of the object is really sharp. And the wider the objects in in this direction are x and z that is like this one because it's a uh, it's uh, elongated in this direction the wider they are the um, the more blurred they are obviously let's um, wait until this is finished i fast forward it just a few seconds down here in the um, in the render view you see the time it takes for rendering that's in my case 1 minute 20 seconds for a resolution of 1440 pixels wide and um, it's this perspective uh, shape which we render that's the uh, previously locked or still locked camera and we have samples 423222 two, two, two. if we check the render settings I pumped up the sample value from 3 to 4 and that one from 2 to 3 so, uh, that's for the re reflections because I wanted to uh, to have a little bit more reflections and a little bit less of graininess that's the 4 
could have pumped up pumped it up to well five or six uh, then uh, Arnold would uh, make even more effort to get rid of the remaining uh, graininess here two things I want to point you to the reflections are not blurred here you see the lights and they're all very distinct and uh, they are not blurred that's a typical effect because there are reflection and the reflection does not move stays there another thing which is quite interesting is this one look at the outlines look at the rim of the objects this is perfectly smooth here but this one isn't it has little edges like these how about this one same here but not here not here not here not here but here you see little well little irregularities it's not, not totally round why is that let me close this window again um, and let's have a look at this one for example this one is fine so we go to the attribute editor that's control a and in the attribute editor we see something called tessellation it's the NURBS sphere shape and we have a section called tessellation and what I do often when I have these edge problem here it's not a real problem but it depends on how what you want to get and I want to get roundness here with most of my objects um, and I check at enable advanced tessellation because tessellation is exactly what this is about here when you click here you display the render tessellation this is not going to be rendered but um, here you see how many polygons the renderer interprets on that object when you enable the advanced tessellation you have to open the advanced tessellation section down here and here I introduced the number of spans instead of I think 4 by 4 I pumped the values up to 10 by 10 now um, when we go to this object here the enable advanced tessellation is turned off so what I do now is I go to the other camera the perspective one and I go closer to this object here and I render it and I need to render the perspective shape one now here you see the edges whereas here you don't see them so let's use this icon here in order to select just a part of the image so it doesn't have to render all the rest here so here we see what we don't want in this case nice reflection though and that's I minimize this window that's what we can change by uh, enabling the advanced tessellation here actually the default are 3 by 3 let's change them to 5 by 5 and 5 by 5 that means in both UV dimensions that dimension round here and that one how the uh, surface is built now let's reopen this and now you already see that the corners are gone and when a value of 5 and 5 works fine with you leave it there because the more the higher the, that value is the longer the rendering time actually I can see just a little bit of a um, of an edginess right here but maybe this is doesn't play a role for your purpose and uh, you know how to get there now so that's uh, the tessellation it's important with NURBS surfaces of course not of course it, it is important let's go to the render settings which are here it opens the, the click on this icon opens the render uh, settings we're in the common tab here and I'm rendering PNG and I give my file a name NURBS components scaling I called it because it was a tutorial about uh, scaling of components of NURBS objects down here I and this is important uh, I want to render an animation a whole sequence of images that's why I choose this name number and extension uh, instead of the default which is name and single frame so you need to go to the extension thing in order to get uh, something an animation to be rendered the start frame and the end frame and um, these are the cameras which can be rendered so if you don't want to render perspective one but that because that's our working camera you just put it into the trash so um, Arnold will only render this uh, camera here 
the evenly important tab is the Arnold Renderer tab here. If you choose another renderer like V-Ray here, these settings look different. So that's what I did with the camera anti-aliasing -alias and I'll show you what happens if I, um, sorry, if I uh, reduce this uh, value to 1. Instead of 4 we have 1 now. Now let me render this the previous look again. You see it's finished with rendering in 6 seconds and uh, it's all very grainy. That's the value of uh, 1 here. If you pump it up to 10, which is very ambitious, let's re-render it. Because it will take a little bit longer, I will fast forward it now and you s you'll see the result then. two minutes and 19 seconds instead of six seconds. When you're working in an animation context, not just rendering single frames, I would always recommend to keep an eye on this value here. 10 is ridiculously large for a standard animation. Four is quite good. Uh, further down here in the Arnold settings window, you find the motion blur. Here it's enabled and here it's disabled. And you will notice when you render a frame, like say frame 40, let's go to frame 40, that would be that one. Um, let's render it. I'm rendering only this section and it's still rendering. Uh, but you see it's no motion blur involved now. By the way, if you have a higher resolution for your HDR image, which is mapped to the uh, sky dome, which wraps around the whole scene, you won't get blurred uh, images like these, blur blurred reflections, I mean, like these, because you have a sharper um, image for as a background here. Same here. If you don't want that, uh, that blurriness here, the blurriness comes is due to the uh, pretty low resolution. I think it's only 4,000 pixels wide. without motion blur. Mo motion blur of course takes uh, a long time to render, much longer than a, a usual image. So we, you enable it right here. When you enable it, frame 40, uh, the uh, time slider uh, moves somewhere else. Have a look on the time slider while I press enable. You see it jumps to the, uh, forward and back just briefly and then it lands on 40 because it has to determine how the motion is going from where and to where in order to calculate that motion blur. Um, I forgot one thing, the material attributes of the objects. It's an, a standard surface shader, Arnold surface shader, and I used the preset, I don't remember which one, and um, because I usually start from them and then I change them. You have a color and if you um, disable the color here by break the connection, you basically have the same image. Um, because the color in many cases, in many uh, presets for the standard surface shader is not important, uh, especially when you work with subsurface scattering. And here is the important value really and that's what I uh, used for mapping a, um, a ramp texture too. And the ramp texture um, goes, as you can see by clicking here, from a dark red to white to a dark red. And I mapped it using the U direction of the geometry, not the V direction. The V direction would be that one. And you see from the um, view here, that we can sort of look through the object because it's it has subsurface scattering and the viewport rendering tries to uh, simulate that just a little bit. So this is the, the the shader I had and when we go back to the final animation now, let me rerun it, you see all the effects at work. The ramp shader only from the subsurface the moving background image on the objects, highly reflective objects, the moving white background,
background. Is black nicer or white nicer? I don't know. And you have different tessellations here. The top right object here and that one here. They are not tessellated as high as most of the other objects like that one or that one. They have round corners, very nice and round, whereas these have slightly edges, this one as well. And only one light in the scene. Pretty amazing. That's actually the reason why I came back to Maya after neglecting it for about a decade, because all of a sudden um, Mental Ray was not there anymore, and there was a renderer available which produced excellent images just with single light setting. And Arnold is just a winner in this field. V-Ray and uh, Renderman, of course, are as good. But uh, this Arnold package comes with Maya. That's why I'm concentrating on it. Well, this was not a tutorial, really. It was more an expedition, and uh, I hope you enjoyed it a little bit. I certainly enjoyed rendering this animation because I quite like it. It's uh, meditative. Bye-bye.